In this episode, we'll examine the smoke visible in the Goodwin video. We'll cover the smoke's location in 3D, the scattering effect, and the wind's influence. The location of the smoke in 3D has been questioned by people with a poor grasp on perspective, that is, on how 3D objects look like when projected on a 2D plane. Here's a 3D demonstration. This is a bird's eye view of the bullet path from 32-135 to the most targeted area of the festival. This is a close-up of the 32-135 window with the same bullet path. We'll now replace the bullet path with a big red flag, to better see it, while keeping the line direction exactly as it is. In green is a line connecting Mr. Goodwin's camera to the end of the barrel in 32-135. We'll now descend to Mr. Goodwin's location, and look at the flag from there. The green line will disappear towards the end, because we'll be looking directly into it. Here's how the view matches the wider angle in Mr. Goodwin's video. And here's a frame with smoke. This perspective shift was already demonstrated with Google Earth images, both from a bird's eye view and from Mr. Goodwin's vantage point. This is how Google Earth shows points of interest on the invisible side of the building. Some falsely misrepresented this image as showing 32135 on the visible side. This can't be true since the yellow marker is clearly partially hidden, and thus on the other side of the building. Also, if the label referred to the front of the building, we would add an arrow pointing to that specific floor on the visible side, as we've always done in the past. A few geometric stats. Mr. Goodwin was looking up at an angle of about 30 degrees. From Mr. Goodwin's location, we can't see the broken window in 32135 because it's hidden behind the building's corner. That invisible wall angles back about 6 degrees away from our field of view, shown in green. It means there's about 3 feet of space in front of 32135, shown in yellow, which we can't see. This also means that if we don't see smoke in Mr. Goodwin's video, it doesn't mean there's no smoke there, only that the smoke extends less than 3 feet out of the window. The smoke's location gives the best match in 3D if, at the time of that volley, the barrel of the gun was in the lower right corner of the window, somewhere between the chair and the pillar. This echoes back a prediction from several months ago. Interestingly, there are no shells on the armchair, even though there are many on the floor underneath and nearby. This suggests that Paddock was kneeling, sitting, or lying, rather than standing while shooting. Paddock's shooting stance brings up two points. First, it suggests that Paddock's choice of this window in 32135 was not random, but due to the solid pillar which gave him protection. Paddock couldn't predict if cops would bring in snipers. If that happened, the pillar would provide cover, while other windows in 32135 would leave him exposed. Secondly, it raises the question how this relates to the LVMPD report, in which an officer says that he saw a man standing in 32135 sometime after the initial shots. There are two possibilities. Either the officer saw only Paddock's head in the rifle, but not the legs or the floor, and falsely assumed that Paddock was standing. Or, Paddock could have been standing during the first volley, when the officer spotted him. Later on Paddock knelt or lied down, and hid behind the pillar, because the probability of the cops bringing in snipers increased. Some people wonder if the shape outside of 32135 are the curtains. This can't be true, at least not for the entire shape. At its furthest distance, the shape stretches out about 14 feet away from the window. The windows on floor 32 are about 10 feet tall and so are the curtains. The curtains are not long enough, even if they somehow floated at a right angle to the window. Note that when the curtains in 32-135 are blowing around, only their bottom two-thirds extend beyond the window, and the angle is nowhere near perpendicular. What this video most likely shows is smoke, growing and dispersing in approximate sync with each round. 
the change in appearance is caused by a change in density, not a change in lighting. But the crucial point here is that the perceived density is not real. It looks far denser than what we'd see in daylight because of a phenomenon called forward scatter. It happens if we have a light source, particulate matter whose particles are smaller than the light beam, and something that obstructs the view of the light. The result is that the particulate matter looks brighter and denser than it really is. Here's a jar with some particulate solution, lit by a laser. If viewed from the same side as the light source, the light scattering is moderate, and the solution looks thin. When viewed against the light, the beam suddenly looks much brighter, and the solution looks denser, even though nothing about it has changed. In Mr. Goodwin's video, the smoke is backlit by the lighting strip behind it, but the corner of the building blocks the light source, which creates the right conditions. The contribution of the muzzle flash is probably small, if any. Given the real density in a similar situation, as seen in daytime, without the backlighting and forward scatter the smoke would probably not be visible from this distance. Someone objected that the changes in density are too quick. Again, the density we see is not real, it's an optical effect. We can't judge the dispersal speed based on our experiences with smoke which is actually as dense as it looks in Mr. Goodwin's video. Secondly, if we watch the video with enhanced brightness, we can see that the smoke is visible at all times during a volley. Even if it disappears from our view it doesn't mean that it's gone, only that it's less than 3 feet from the window. Backlighting and forward scatter explain why the smoke is visible from this location, but not from others. The next obvious step is to find videos shot from a similar angle. Unfortunately, in no other video is the lighting strip behind the 32135 hidden. The restaurant parking video comes the closest, but it's not quite there. We may have been able to see the smoke in that video too, if the cameraman were closer to the boulevard, and if he filmed during the automatic rounds. By the way, backlighting and forward scatter is used in astronomy to make faint particulate matter visible, such as vapor jets from icy moons, or the rings of Saturn. When researching the wind's impact on a building for a previous episode, something turned up which was left out to keep the episode short. In light of Mr. Goodwin's video, it's worth mentioning. With wind blowing on one side of the building, on the other side, near the corners, it creates vortexes, which produce a local suction effect. As mentioned before, on October 1st, between 10 and 11 p.m., the wind oscillated between south and west, so the corner suction effect would be right where Paddock's suite was. This, unintentionally, may have given Paddock free ventilation by removing smoke from the room. Maybe that's why the snorkel proved unnecessary. Now a visual clarification of the wind and draft problem. We're dealing with two separate air exchanges. 135 versus the hotel, with the 135 door open. And a separate exchange, 135 versus 134, with both windows broken and both doors closed. How the tablecloth on the food cart behaves, with the 135 door open illustrates only the 135 versus the hotel case. It tells us nothing about the separate 135 versus 134 case, with both doors closed, which was the situation during the shooting.